Hello, we are now on to um, assignment number four. I'm going to bring over the Canvas window, that is your class, and we are going to go down to, um, well, I'll have to go back up, I mean, here's the web page stuff, which has been all populated with, you know, my movies, not just Sean's movies, the photo retouch area, the image manipulation, which you just finished, 3.1, and now we're going to go to 4.1. Um, this is the way 4.1 actually looks right now. Let me see if I can zoom in. I don't think I can. I thought I fixed that. Anyway, um, the image, the 3D textures currently, I know it's small on the screen, but I've added Sean Sarcona's name to both of these top ones, and they will be on the bottom when you finally get to this assignment, okay? Um, the reason why I've kept his material in there is because this was Sean's, um, that's actually not Sean's, that's actually my PSD file, but let me bring up Sean's movie, which he is a 3D guy, okay? And although this is a 3D texture assignment, I'm going to show you that Sean goes through the same image manipulation, I'm kind of flying through it really fast, as I'm going to. Preparing a file for Maya, is the same in roughly the same way except for saving it as out as an if or um, whatever file format he wants you to save it out for we're gonna save ours out as PSD files but see how Sean I'm kind of advancing on his movie see how Sean does this whole um, creation and I'm not gonna explain what he's doing here because I'm gonna go through and do it but he takes this image and he puts it onto this 3D texture. So see how this 3D texture right here has been put onto um, his Maya scene? Let me see if I can stop this, like that one right there. So there's his 3D Maya scene. I'm gonna go into After Effects and do it. I'm gonna actually bring in the file into After Effects and show you what the image composite looks like in After Effects and then what we're gonna do with it. What I'm going to do with mine is let me minimize this is show you that this is the um, actual file with all the layers and let me turn them off and on this was the size um, this was the graffiti part and then this was my smaller graffiti one this is the brick background and then I even created a shadow layer for the mortar shadow which I'll show you when I turn this off here's the mortar shadow layer and then of course I have this overlay of stain on top that I'm turning off now there is a folder that you're going to have and I'll open it up and it's the source material where you're given all of these source materials here and I'll just show you that you're given this brick, you're given the graffiti um, on the wall which will cut out all the extraneous blue material and whatever's on it. You're also given, um, let me see if I can get there, the stain that is actually a PNG file. What did that mean? Is you know PNG or I'm telling you PNG can retain transparency. So if I open up the PNG file, I'll close it very quickly, but if I open it up in Photoshop, you can see that the PNG file retains transparency. So um, you can see the checkerboard background here, but I am gonna close that or else I'll go back to my one that I had created here. Um, that's the one I actually brought into After Effects and I'm gonna just go back to the main one because I want you to see a couple of things. I want you to see how, um, let me hit the F key to expand this to the screen, that um, we are going to make this look real, all right, obviously. And when we get it into After Effects, this is what the image is actually going to look like. Now, I don't even want to get into any of my detail stuff, but let me go into the After Effects file and bring it over to this screen and show you what we're actually going to end up doing with it. I'm going to zoom into this, but look at how I'm putting this young lady who is against a green screen, and I'll show you what I'm talking about. I'll click on her image and I'll hit the E key and I'll turn off of key light, and then you can see how she's against a green screen in there. Um, and I'm gonna key out, K-E-Y, out the green screen, and this is not an After Effects class, I promise, I promise. And I'm not requiring you to do this part. What I am requiring you to see, and let me turn her image off and turn her shadow layer off, is here is the file as it appears in After Effects. And I've turned on the 3D layer in After Effects, and then I'm gonna click up to the camera, and I'm gonna hit C for camera in After Effects. And I'm gonna show you how I can actually maneuver around this 
image, okay? I can even take the female image right there and I can turn on the visibility of this and the visibility of that. So I can actually take that background and look at how I can move it around the screen and give myself a different look. And of course, I can actually um, zoom into that, okay? Or take the C key and um, move this around the screen in the back of it. I can move this image over and put her in front of the screen here. I can even take the shadow if I wanted to. This is all cool to do in After Effects. Let me hit the C key again to orbit around the screen. I can turn it a little bit more. I can even scale it up or down but I can click on the shadow part of her and I can actually hit the V key and I can move the shadow over. So watch how I can take the shadow and as she moves the shadow really can be manipulated any way I want. Any way I want to put the shadow in there and that looks awfully real. So some of the things that you see in um, on TV they're not real. I mean, she is basically shot against a green screen and I can do put her anywhere I want to in any environment that I want to. I can even turn off her image and put on another image back there. And I even had a light in here to show you that um, I kind of had a neat spotlight on her in After Effects and you can see just how that is. But we're going to do the entire thing um, and I may break this up into two movies, okay? Uh, we're just going to do the entire thing and then it'll only take me a few minutes to bring the wall and the woman into After Effects, okay? Again, this is not an After Effects class. I just want you to see how the texture is applied. So I'll minimize that and we'll go back into Photoshop and we'll start the file. So I told you that you were given, um, and I'm going to start this file completely over again. I'm going to hit the F key so I can get back to the tabs here. And I'm going to turn off this one tab because I really don't need it now that I'm thinking about it. And I am going to go to the decal tab and turn that off because I'll open this up and I just won't save those changes. So I'm going to take this other Im this um, canvas page to the other screen and then I'm going to bring over, let me see if I kept it open. Let me see if that's the assignments, that's the RTF, there's the 1320. So. Um, that's the actual, no, that's my graded assignment. So here is the asset folder. This is what you're given at the start of it, okay? And there may be five or six pieces in here when I'm finished. I'm not sure what I'm going to do yet. But um, I'll click to the icon so you can see there's four icons in here. What I want to do is right hand click and open that with Photoshop. So now I have the brick completely open. Now I'm going to hit the F key and expand that to full screen and I'm going to show you what the image size is. Now right when you get this, I would like you to command shift S or control alt S and I would like you I'm sorry command shift S or control shift S on a PC and I'd like you to save this as your name so I'll save it as Brian and underscore um, 3d texture and I'm going to save it into that um, folder, not the asset folder, but I'll save it into my 3D folder. And I'll say that this is my 3D texture. And then I'll go on screen. So I at least know that this is the one that I made on screen. Now I want to actually make it into a PSD file. So I'm going to go up and make it say PSD. Now I have the everything I need, okay? I'm just going to go bring stuff in here. So the very first thing that I need to do, and please, you can play this movie over and over again to see, but what we're going to do is we're going to put the graffiti on the background and we're going to put the stain on the background. We're going to choose modes for them so they blend into the brick, and then we're going to add a bit of depth to the brick to make the brick look more like a 3D piece of brick. Then we're going to do some tricks so we can move the graffiti around the wall and I'll explain this later and have the bricks stay put. So understand I'm going to just do that. So I want to make sure this file isn't so huge, but let me go command option I or control alt I and see the image size. I'm going to bring it over from the other screen. It's 4,000 pixels by 3,000 pixels. And it doesn't really matter how many pixels per inch it is. What matters is it's a reasonable size to bring into After Effects later because I usually like to do something about two or three times up in size and then just shrink it into After Effects. Well, my After Effects window is going to be 960 by 540. So 
four, this is about almost four times up. At least it's not 40 times up. So I'm fine with the image the way it is right there. So what I'm going to do now is hit the F key so I can get over to here and shrink this window just a little bit. So I could go to this window and then I'm going to drag a couple of things into it. Okay, I'm going to take the, um, the decals over here and I'm going to put the decal inside of here. Now you can see if I shrink this that it isn't exactly the right size. I'm just going to fake it. I'll put it over here because it's gone into an automatic transform. Let me make it come bigger and you can't see it very well on the screen but I'm going to grab this. I'm not going to hold the shift key and I'm just going to put it so it's extending beyond my outer um, border. So I'm going to hit the return key and I'll just name that stain. So that's the staining on the wall. Now I'm going to turn it off. Currently it's a smart, it's been connected to its original file. I don't need it to be. There's some things I want, I'm, I'm happy with where it is and there's some things I want to do to it that I don't want it to be a smart object. So I'm going to right hand click and rasterize this layer to separate it from its original file. That was fine, and I can hit Command S to save the file. I didn't hurt the original file. It is still definitely in this folder. Well, that's the not the right folder. It's in this folder. Now, what I want to do while I'm in here is bring in the graffiti. So I'm going to pick up the graffiti and drop it into the window. And then I have all the assets that I want. Okay, and this is enough for this file. Now. It's a smart object too, especially after I transform it and I make it bigger and I now hit the return key, it should say that it's going to be a smart object. If, it's, if it is, I'll rasterize it. If it's not, then that's fine, but it's now a smart object. So I've got it the right size, I've got it just about where I want it, and I will right hand click and I will rasterize this layer. So now we have all three items. Let's call this graffiti but take away the rest of the name. So I just have it down to this and command S to save the file. So now I'm keeping on saving about every two or three times. Now I want the stain to go over the graffiti. Okay, Our job is to make a mask and cut out all the blue. So what I'm going to do first is make the, graf is make the um, layer mode of this um, stain look good. So I'm going to hit the F key to uh, make this go to full screen and then I'm going to turn off the graffiti, click to the stain layer. I'm not going to destroy it, I'm just going to play with the modes. Now on a Mac, if I take the mode switch and I click it, just click it, I can go shift plus and that will go through all the modes automatically and I'm just using shift plus shift plus shift plus and you can see what I'm doing with it now I like the fact that multiply makes all the bricks come off of it really well now what I'm gonna do is um, lower the opacity just a bit so you can see how I can kind of melt it in now that's a dark stain on the wall for the movie file, I made it a lighter stain. So I'll go down, click this again, and I'll just go um, Shift Plus, and I'll go down to Screen. So you can, I want you to try anything you want. I don't care what you leave it on. There's Screen. Now I'm going to take Screen, and I kind of like what it did. I'll go back up in opacity to make it a little sharper. But it's like, you know, how um, some brick walls have a lighter upper area of wood and the wood over the years, the paint off the wood has stained the wall. Well, that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to leave it on that mode. So I've changed the mode of my upper stain layer to screen. You can make it anything you want. I'm hitting command S to save the file, but I'm going to turn this off. Now I'm going to turn on the graffiti and click to it. I'm not going to hurt the original graffiti layer. So I'll just take it. It's graffiti copy. I'll name it graffiti two. Now, I'm going to make the brick be a background. I'm going to make the brick be a layer. The, the, it says background. It's italicized and it's locked. So I'm going to double click it, hit the return key, and now it's layer 0, and I'm going to call it brick. I'm going to hit Command S to save the file, and I have brick right there. Now, there is going to come times when I'm going to want you to see something on screen. And if I turn everything off, you can see the checkerboard background is getting in the way. So although I'm going to throw these away in a few minutes, I'm going to make two layers. One, two. I'm going to put them both below the brick layer. This is just for me for the screen thing. 
Now I'm going to bring over the tool palette so you can see it and I'm going to make the background color, I'm sorry, the foreground color be black. And I'm going to click to this, I'm going to name this black just so I can maybe show you some things easier to see and I'm going to go Option or Alt Delete and fill with black. I'm going to turn it off. Now I'm going to click to the next layer and call it white. I know I'm going to need this for my on-screen tutorial. Now to fill with the background color is Command Delete. So now I filled it. So I have a white background and I have a black background. Uh, actually I didn't fill with it. So let me go Command Delete and fill with that. So, oh, it would help if I turned it on. <laughs> I didn't have the visibility on. So Command Delete and fill with white. Let me put this back over here. Now. Sometimes it's going to be easier if I click to the black layer and turn the brick on and lower the opacity on the brick like I just did. You'll be able to see my selection line better because there are times I'm going to want you to see that. Now, as I go through this movie, if the phone rings or if some silly thing happens, I can go up to um, the movie making application that I have and I can pause it. So if you hear the phone ring and it goes away, I'll just pause this video and if this video goes on too long, I'm going to make two videos, okay, just so you know. My job is to take the graffiti two layer, but the graffiti layer that I made, I'm going to put lower than everything just because it's down there, okay, and I can save it. It's the original. I'm good with it. Now I'm going to zoom in. I want to make a selection of this and there's so many ways I could take the pen tool and draw it around then I can take the pen tool which is going to be a path in the path palette and make it into a selection but there's a couple of things that I want you to see that are different with tools and I'm going to go to the lasso but I'm going to go to the magnetic lasso and I'm going to ask the lasso in its default tolerances it's on a width of 10 pixels a contrast of 10 and a frequency of 57 those are pretty much the defaults now if I just start drawing on this you can see how it goes right around to that now look at how I can't get closer to the edge of that screen and look at how I'm not doing a really good job of getting the edge now if I hold the space bar with the hand tool I can move it over and now the space bar is acting well I really did a bad job there but watch how easy it is to fix later so I'm going around the whole screen space bar down move it over Let's now continue to draw and go back up with it. I'm not as concerned with how this is looking. Um, I'm just concerned with getting a reasonable edge to the blue. So let's go around the whole thing as fast as I can. I'm holding the space bar to get down to the edge here. And again, this is the magnetic lasso. So let's now hold the space bar, move it over to here, and let's continue on. And now we'll do this. Um, I want you to learn from a very early time in Photoshop that working in a channel mask I know that sounds weird but I'm gonna do it for you because I think it's a very valuable thing to work in a channel mask because channel masking is a very um, savable item it's a very quick item to edit back and forth and then create a resave of it I'm and I'm kind of I'm drawing as I'm talking and I'm not going to try to be perfect here because you're going to see how easily in channel mask I can go grab the edge of this and make it better. So I'm just going around the whole file with my, with my magnetic lasso. Important thing to remember is I'm never letting go of the mouse button. Okay, my mouse button is always pressed down and I have my shift key to make it be a hand. I can move the hand and move the screen to a different part. So you can see how now when I get over here, space bar over, I'll come down around that silly little dip there. We're going to have to get rid of the fact that this graffiti was originally done on a wall that had a, um, a higher portion to it. And we're going to use the clone stamp to get rid of it. And you can use the healing brush when you want or the clone stamp. Or, and I will be using the clone stamp and a mixture of that and the paintbrush to get um, this graffiti to a point where it's got no blue in the background. And there's a couple of tricks that we're going to go through and I'm going to show you. Now I'm getting back to where I started right here and look at how now it's going to close. I let go and it turns into a selection. Now I wanted you to see the channel palette. 
I'm going to turn off the brick wall and turn off the graffiti and you can see how I have a selection. I don't know how well it's showing up on this screen because sometimes the movie it doesn't show up as good as I want it to be but I'm gonna go ahead and save that selection. I'll try it on a white background. I don't think so. It's better on a black background. At least it is on my screen but I don't know if it's even showing up in the movie. But when you have it as a selection go to select and save selection. Let's just call this mask and I'll say OK. Now it shows up in the channels palette so I click the channels palette. Now what I want to do is turn off this black background and turn on the brick again. I want to be able to take, I'm going to turn on the graffiti, I want to be able to paint before I actually make a selection out of a mask, a mask, a true layer mask on this layer right here on the layer I'm turning off, I want to edit this and go around the edge and see how it's performing. Let's zoom in to where I did a really bad job right here. Look at how that's a really bad job of that mask. So what I'm going to do is to hit command D to deselect. Now would you please look, this is where I want you, I want you in the channel palette selected on the mask channel. I don't want you to click up to the RGB image. I want you to click down to the mask. Now I'll hit the paintbrush and I'm going to make this be black on the foreground and white on the background and then I'm going to go kind of quickly here up to a hundred percent flow on my paintbrush. Now you can see what I'm talking about. I'm going to hit command Z. I'm going to hit the X key. So I'm painting white out here and if I paint in here, you're not going to see anything happen. So I'll hit Command Z and Option Command Z or Alt Command Z to go back. I got to fix this. But the point is, is I can't see the brick. Now, Photoshop did a really neat thing in channels. If I click on the eyeball for the top layer in RGB, look what I did. I just clicked on the eyeball. I see this green color. Now, I'm going to turn off the eyeball it's always and ever and only going to be black and white but Photoshop allowed for me when two channels are showing the black turns into whatever color I want so let me show you what I'm talking about look at how I can paint in white up here or command Z back or paint in black up here so look at how I can fix this and come straight down like this I'm painting in black when I click this on, I'm still painting in black, but it looks green. Do you understand? Now, can you change the color of this? Yes. You can double click the channel and you get to choose whatever color you want. Let's pretend that I'm going to go to a purple. And I click OK and I click OK and now it's a purple. It's not really a purple or a magenta. It's black. So I'm still painting in and out of black. And if I hit the X key, I'm painting white where I want to fix that up. Now you can see how I can make this a nice clean edge all the way around. Now I'm going to hit the X key and you can see how I'm going here and I'm actually painting the blue out. So I'm going along that edge at a hundred percent flow. Look at how the hardness of my brush is not all the way hard, it's almost all the way hard. I'm going to hit the return key and command S to save the file. Now we'll fix this part later with the clone tool but that's for another story. I need to go around this edge and fix it. Now look at how I have something here. I got to fix that later but I kind of went not very straight there. So do not click away from this mask. If you do and click up to the RGB image don't panic. Just don't start painting because you'd be painting on the RGB layer not on the mask. Do you understand what I just said? So in order to add more purple or we'll make it back to green just because I don't know it's just a different value I'm okay with that I'm going to make sure I'm selected on the new mask layer and I'm gonna to toggle this on and off to be able to see the image underneath now if you look at the foreground and background colors they're still black and white so this allows me to go in and take this and look at how I can paint black up there, although it looks green. 
I'm now going to hit the X key and make that a sweeter little curve. So do whatever you have to do in order to make that line be pretty reasonable. Look at the big bump that's up there. I'm going to take it and smooth it right out. I'm going to come around here and take a little bit more of this and take it up like that. Now let's go around the whole image and make it right. There's a bad bumping going on there or up and down stuff. Let me hit the X key and paint white on the layer mask. I'm not painting white as white paint or anything. I'm just making this edge go one way or the other. Please tell me you understand that. Now let's go to the X key and let's now fix this down here. Let's go down here and eventually I'm going to go on to this layer that I'm circling right here. See it? See it? See it? And I'm going to fix where this blue is. I'm going to go in and with the help of my mask I'm going to paint white and because that blue this white thin part of the graffiti got too, too thin. So I'm going to go around it and now I'm going to actually extend this out. So I went with the wrong key. I have to hit the X key and I'm going to actually extend this out into the blue area knowing I'm going to fix white paint on it later. Now let's hit the X key and thin it down here because Brian got a little bit messy with his line and let's come around very nicely letting go of the brush every little while and look at how I'm now going to go around it. A little bit of a bump here. Okay that's good. I'm good around here. I'm good around here. Um, this got a little too thin so let's go hit the X key and paint this out a little bit. I'm going to fix that. Don't worry about this bad stuff. Look at the pretty much the width of my line. Now there's a bad thing there. Let me take this now and figure this out nicely here. Let's come down here and round this off. Remember, I know it's easy to lose track of it. Whoops. Need to hit the X key and put it back in. You're painting on a mask for the purpose of having the edge of the mask be help you to restore the image and cut out the image. Does that make sense to you? Now let me come around here and fix this. Whoops, I did it again. I have to Command Z back and hit the X key to fix it. Now I'm pretty good. Now what I want to do is Command S to save the file. Now let's take this and cut it out of its blue background. So I'm going to click now I click up to the RGB image. I no longer want to play with this mask. I want to turn the eyeball off and click up to the RGB image. Now if I make a selection of the mask, command or control click on the icon. You can write that down if you want. Click up to your graffiti layer, look what I'm doing, and click on the mask. So you have a selection, click on the mask, it now cuts it out. Now I want to feather or gauge and blur that edge but there's a way that we can help this before I go painting or doing anything else to it there's a way that I can help it and I want you to see something in if I have this mask selected I can go to the properties window and in the properties of the mask window I'll make it longer I can actually add an automatic feather to the edge now what I'm gonna do is move this over and then I'm going to get close. So I'm going to zoom in so you can see the edge. And what I should do is take off the brick. Now watch how I can make it ridiculous. I'll come up to the edge and look at how I'm making it really fuzzed or really fuzzed, which was stupid. Okay, so I'm going to go down to a reasonable number back to where I started and I'll fuzz it out about four pixels. There, it's 4.0. And it's in the kind of like blended out, kind of nice and soft. I still have to fix it though, okay? Which isn't hard. Now, you see the mask edge here, this button that I'm going to click, it's the top button. A new window will come up. Now, I can take the radius and I can actually have the radius go inside or outside depending on how much I move it. So I can actually take this and you can see how I can kind of start squishing it on the inside and the outside. So I'm actually moving it towards the inside a little bit more, cutting off a little bit more of that blue and making it easier on me. I can go to adjust the edge, the smoothness, the feather of the edge again here. I think I'll actually add a two pixel feather here and I'll go remove the feather from the other one. Now this one is where I can shift the shift. I can go negative or positive. Currently it's on zero. If I go one way then it moves one way. If I go the other way then it moves the other way. See how I've gone to the outside 
Well, you don't want that. See how I've gone to the inside? Well, I've cut it off too far. So I'll go back to a, where it was zero. I'll just put it on zero. And then I could put it like at minus seven. I didn't mean to hit the return key. So I could go back to here and I could take the shift edge back to where it was. So I'm gonna say okay on this and then I'm gonna take the feather of this down to two pixels. And now, uh, oh, it's 21 pixels. I meant two, not 21, two, Brian. So now let's go here, that's perfect. So that's the properties thing. Now what I wanna do is I want to use the mask here and since I can paint on this without worrying about a selection I can go to the B key right the B key and I can click to the image now I you're not going to see any paint out here because there's a mask preventing you from seeing it so if I grab this color right there do you see whoops do you see how I can now go to a soft brush to about a 10 on the flow of this I think I have my, um, but I'm, I'm not actually finishing my statement. I'm actually now going to lighten up on this edge and I'm gonna go over it with paint and I'm not worried about removing the texture that I had there. I'll tell you why. Because, and let me make sure I'm going to a little bit harder brush. Because we're going to make the texture of the brick be the texture that works. So I'm going to go around this. I'm not really concerned with like losing that texture right there. I could use the clone tool and clone out this texture and put it up there. Meaning I could take the S key, make the clone stamp. Look at, if I option or alt click here, I could move it up there and I could clone out the blue and retain the texture. Do you remember that? Remember how I can actually go around this? Well, I can click here and I can now click that and you can see how easily I can use the clone stamp. If I clone it here, I can clone up there. So I um, kind of missed that and I need to come back to that and fix that up. So I can actually click right there and then I can just click and kind of lighten that up. Now I can click, if I go smaller, I can click uh, option click here and move it straight up there and just move it over. Now I'm getting too much of that edge in there. So what I'd rather do is go back to the B key and then just paint the edge out, which is fine because I'm okay with it. Now let's go like this, let's go around here like this and you can see how I'm just painting on that edge. I don't want that blue there. So now let's get rid of the blue and now I need to do quite a bit of a fix up here. So let's now go through this and let's paint this all the way right through here. Now what I'm gonna do is go down and I might wanna retain a little bit of that texture. So I'm gonna hit the S key and I'm gonna go down in size toggling my brackets and I'm gonna grab this texture right here. See where I'm grabbing right over here, click. Now I'm gonna use it at 50% value. So I'm gonna, you can see my clone is on 50% and I'm cloning with a medium soft brush. So I'm gonna clone this, and you can see how I'm just adding to that. Now, I let go of the mouse. I'm gonna start again and move it down. I'm now gonna go over to here and move it down. Look at how now I'm getting rid of that whole wall thing right there. The whole wall thing is gone. You can see how I'm making that work really nicely. I'm letting go of my mouse every little bit. Now I can actually go to here and I can grab that edge. And if I wanted to, I could replace the edge and make the edge come, whoops, I let go of the mouse. And I can make the edge actually come in right there and you can see how well I can actually fix that up and make that go straight. Now let's grab this, let's put that right there and I've got that pretty well. Now, I'm gonna clone out the rest of this in a few minutes after I fix this whole thing. So let's go over to here again, let's grab this. Let's now go right over to here and now, whoops, I went too far. Let's go a little bit farther like this, a little bit farther back. Now I'm gonna go back, I'm gonna let go of my mouse and now we're gonna go um, fix this edge. So I go back to the B key, I make it smaller. I option click and grab this color and you can see how, whoops, I was holding the shift key, I didn't mean to. Now let's go back in and let's clean up this edge. And again, this is a graffiti wall. I'm really zoomed in close. So don't be so incredibly hard on yourself. Look at how at this depth, that looks pretty good. Let's go fix this. So you can choose a couple of ways. You can paint it with black or paint it with gray or use your S key and I'm at 50% value. I'll option or alt click here. 
right about here. And then I'm going to go across like this, which means I'll go across like this. Now look at how easily I fixed that. Now if I make the brush smaller, I can go back over here and re-grab that area and then just make it go like this. Now look at how you have to let go every little while or else you'll run into problems. Look at how I could definitely run into problems like that. So I'm just going to go back. I'm just going to use a little bit of a technique like this. Now let's paint out this edge and make it look nice. Now I could use the clone tool if I grab this right there above it and I can clone that just like this. Now let's go back here and grab the black and let's go back with the black. So it's, it's a back and forth thing until you get it exactly the way you want. And I think I just did. So that's good. Let's go around it on the bottom and let's now go fix the bottom area. So let me grab this and let's just fix the bottom area. So I'm just going to grab that right around here and you can see how I've taken out that whole thing right there. Now I don't care about this edge, but I do care about painting this out. So basically I could just go like this grab that area right there, right there. I'm in the S key and I'm going to clone this by just clicking. So I'm clicking on it, clicking, clicking, clicking. And I'm going down and I'm reestablishing that value. Let me click right here to reestablish it like this. And now I have that kind of worked out nicely. Whoops. Let me go grab this and let's go in here with a little bit of value. And now, whoops, now I'm going to go back to my B key and fix that. So let's option click on the B key about right here. And now let's go around this and let's fix this and smooth it right out. So I'll go grab this and I'll go grab that and I'll smooth out this edge. I'll get rid of this bump right there. And now I'll get rid of that big thing. But again, you know, I'm not trying to be perfect. Now let's fix the black here. So. S key, clone stamp, click, bracket, smaller brush, and let's go down like this. And let's just grab this and make it go straight in like that. Now let's click and fix this. Let's click and fix that. Let's get rid of this little thing right over here and round that off. Let's go see where else I need to fix. There's a bad thing going on there. So let's click here. I'll just get rid of that. Um, I'll go back to the B key and I'll paint this out with a bigger brush so I'll make that smoother. Let's get rid of the blue. I'm painting now so I'm doing a mixture of painting and cloning. So let's go around it like this. Let's clean this up. Let's go around it like this. Now this is where I want to fix this edge. Command S to save the file. This is probably the biggest part of the, of the whole thing. So I'm painting now. I, I sampled this by holding the Alt or Option key and I'm painting. Now the reason why I don't have a selection active is because this mask prevents any paint from going anywhere. So if I disable the layer mask, you can see what it does. If I enable, well actually I'm going to paint out with white. So look at how I'm making a mess here. Look at how I'm going all the way down and just making a mess. Well you won't see any of this mess beyond the mask. Does that make sense to you? I will right hand click and enable it and now it cut it off. Now what I'd like to do is to option click on this and fix this edge on the mask. So I alt or option clicked on the mask because I don't like how this is cut off in a straight line. So I'll hit the X key and I'll paint in white on this mask. So I'm going to move um, the, the brush down in size. I'm going to make it lar bigger than it needs. Look at how I'm rounding that off, taking the time to actually paint that relatively nice. Now if I go out too far like this, I don't care. Now let's hit the X key and let's fix my little boo-boo. So let's go in here like this and now look at how I'm making that edge really nice, taking the time to do it. Hit the X key again, Brian, and clean up that edge. Now, when I go back to the image, you can see what I've done. Now, I'm going to disable the image again. So I right hand click on it, but I click back to the image. So the mask is disabled. I need to go grab the B key grab this color and completely paint this out over here. Now does it matter how I'm going too far into the blue? No, because the mask will cover it up when I get it there. Right hand click and enable the mask, sorry, and you can see what I've done. Now I fixed up that whole area. I'm kind of happy with it. I don't even mind that boo-boo there, but I'll click to the image, hit the S key for the clone stamp, Option or Alt click here and look at how I can go back and forth and I can actually do what's necessary to make all of this work. Now, 
command S to save the file. Okay, now we're going to go through a process of um, putting it onto the brick. Right now it just looks like it's not on the brick at all. We're going to do a couple of tricks to this brick. Okay, so I'm going to turn off this image. I want to have it's going to be a little hard to explain and I'm going to duplicate this because I don't want to mess it up. I'm going to put the duplicated one underneath the white area and turn it off. I'm going to turn on the top one. I can mess up this copy and this mask without having any danger put in. The very first thing I'm going to do though is double click the layer. And I'm going to go down here to, let me zoom into this, I'm going to go down here to the layer style and I'm going to show the underlying layer by clicking on this a bit. Now do you see how some of the underlying mortar came through? So put this on a little bit down here first. Command S to save the file or Control S to save the file. What I want to do is I want to turn this off and I want to have um, the mortar actually um, be on this entire layer mask. It's very important to me that you understand this next step. It's going to be a little bit hard to understand. But what I need to do is only have one mask on it. Okay. Um, I'm not going to show you something right now, but I'm, I'll do it in a minute. So I'm going to right hand click. You know that I have it saved lower here. I'm going to right hand click and apply the layer mask. Now the layer mask is gone. All I have is this. Now I'm going to turn it off. I need to click to the brick layer and make a selection of the mortar. So I'm going to zoom in. I'm going to get the magic wand, which is the W key. And in the magic wand right there, see how it's the um, W key? And I'm going to go close and I have my tolerance on 22 and contiguous is off. So I'm going to grab part of the mortar. I just did. I clicked right here. I'm going to zoom in and hold the shift key and grab a little bit darker value of the mortar. So let me go here and grab the darker value. That's it. Only two clicks and I'm happy with what the mortar I got. So this is where I told you if we can see it, I'm going to turn off the brick and put on the black. So you can see how I have a selection of all the mortar. Now what I want to do is to, before I lose it, save this selection. I may not use it again, but I want to make sure I have it saved. So I go to here to save selection and I'm going to call it mortar 1. Now again, I may not need it, but at least I have it if I screw it up. Okay. Now, what I'm going to do is to click back up to the graffiti copy layer. Now, if I add a um, a layer mask of this, it's going to completely cut, I'm going to do it too, it's going to completely cut the graffiti off. Completely cut the graffiti off. I want to see why it's not showing. Okay, it was not showing because I didn't have this on. So, um, yes, that's, I'm just a little concerned why that wasn't showing. It should be showing. Anyway, it's okay. I'm going to click the layer mask button and now you can see how I have only the showing in where the mortar is. I did the back, I did it, I did it backwards. So I'm going to click to this here and I'm going to hit command I to invert this. I don't want, I'm going to option or alt click on it. I don't want black bricks with white mortar because where the white is is where the image is supposed to be. So I want it in reverse. So if I go Command I, I've now inversed it. Now I click back to the image and look how we have this, which kind of works, but not really. I didn't want to get rid of where the graffiti was, where the mortar is. I want to just use it for its benefit. So what I'm going to do is Command click on the, on the layer mask again, and I'm going to click to the layer mask. Now. I'm going to try to show you this in a really cool way. Still not sure why that's not showing. Because this is not on a pass through. And oh, but I know why. I know why. Because I used a blend. That's why. I need to go like this and remove this for now. 
Okay, I need to remove this for now because I have the underlying layer is white. <laughs> white on white doesn't show anything. So you understand what I said? I had to double click the layer to take it away to show you what I wanted to show you. So if I option click on this, I want to take the black and make it a level of gray. Why? Because if the black area where the mortar is is white, here I'll, I'll completely show you what I'm talking about. If I um, see how the foreground color is white and I'm clicked onto the layer mask. If I go um, option delete on it, let me click on, uh, then, then, then the mortar is going to end up being white. So let me click on this and go option delete. Now why isn't that filling? Okay. Oh, because that's the brick. Okay, fine. Um, I need to inverse it, shift command I and go option delete. Okay. I have now filled up the um, the brick with white. When I actually now click back to the image, you see that my cutaway of the mortar is gone. Okay, I'll try to explain it two or three times. So I'm going to command Z back. Now, if black is in that area, it's completely cut out, which it is right now. Let me option click to it. See how black is in that area and it's completely cut out. So if I put a 70% gray where the black is or a 50% gray, then you will see some of the graffiti through the wall. So let me command click on that again and hit shift command I to inverse it. Let me click on the, um, let me um, hit the X key and then let's make this a 60% value. So let's go to 60% of the gray. Now you can see over here actually that's um, I think that's still too dark. Let me go to 50%. Now I'm going to go to option delete and fill it up with gray. It's still too dark. See if I go click over here you can see if I turn on the brick wall you can see that you can barely let me hit command H to hide the selection. You can't see there's not enough paint coming through where the mortar is. So this is the neat part. If I leave it just like this and I keep on testing what I'm clicking on, so there's still a selection there. See how a command H shows the selection? I'm going to change the gray now to a lighter gray. So let's go to a 30% gray. Um, so let's go over to here. Oh, because I'm not on that. Okay, so let's go to a 30% gray here. Um, still too dark. Wow. Oh, up here to a 30% gray. Okay, now I'm going to paint where the black is, option delete, and now you can see how 30% let um, most of the graffiti come through where the mortar was. So 30% wasn't good enough either. So let me click this and let's go back to um, make this a little bit darker over here. And now let me click over to the layer mask again and option delete or alt delete and fill. And now can you see how the darker I go, the more I am cutting through to see it. Now I just went a little darker. Okay, now I love that. That looks totally real, to looks totally cool. So let me hit command S to save. So to re-explain, I had, I'll move this back up here. I had the graffiti on the wall. I didn't have any mortar coming through. I had to right hand click and apply the layer mask, but don't do it on the only one you have. Duplicate the layer. Okay, so I'll do it again. I'll duplicate the layer. I'll take this one and move it down here, just so it's way below. This is my copy number two. Okay, so what I did was I applied it. Now what I had to do was to, um, I'll click to this so you can see, I really should have inverted this. So. Um, if I make a selection of this, actually, um, I think I'm fine now. If I make a selection of this and click up back to the RGB image, if I just select the layer mask, it cuts the hole out. It, I did it again. I can't believe I did it again. So um, there is a way, gosh, it's so hard to explain this, but I'm gonna explain it anyway. I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna deselect and go back down to this. If I invert this, Command-I, and I make a selection of it now, down here in the channels palette, and I click up to the RGB image, if I now select my layer and click the add layer mask button, I get what I want. But there's a way in Photoshop to do something that I want you to see, because you gotta know every way. So let me command deselect that, and let me command Z back and show you another way. 
if I deselect and go back to this and hit Command I to re-invert it back, you don't have to keep on inverting a selection down here, a saved selection. If I Command click on it, but I know that I want the opposite of this, um, and I click back up to the RGB image, if I hold the Alt key or the Option key as I add a layer mask, so write that one down, you get to have the opposite thing occur. So you can either click the layer mask button with nothing held down and it'll be exactly what you're getting in the channel or if you want the opposite of the channel to occur hold the alter option key and the opposite will be on the layer mask. Now what I did was I command clicked that and I filled up that area with gray so I'm gonna go option delete and fill it up and you can see did it again. I need to reinverse that. Now if I go Option Delete and Fill, the more gray you have inside this as opposed to black, the more graffiti picture will come through. Okay, so that's Command S to save. Now I want to, and this is going to be a little bit hard, um, but I don't need a copy of that again, so I'm going to throw this away and I'm going to go back to my one that I had here. I want to show you something right now that is very cool and it's why I got rid of the layer mask in the first place. If I have the link palette, the link icon um, showing and visible between the layers, if I hit the V key and I click over to the image, everything moves with it and now nothing lines up. Do you see what I'm talking about? Let me command Z the position back. But if I unlink it and I click to the image, then I'm only moving the image around the screen and the mortar in the mask stays put. Did you understand what I said? This holds its position. This is what I'm moving because I don't have a link icon between them. That's important because now I can actually reposition this on the wall without having to redo all that mortar stuff. So if you have to watch this movie a couple of times to understand what I did, that's fine with me. Now I want to create a shadow a nice brick shadow. So I'm going to make this new layer above it by clicking the add layer, the add the new layer button and make a shadow. Um, if I can spell shadow correctly. Now in order to make a shadow I gotta turn all this off so we can see something. Turn this on and I'm gonna select this. Now I'm gonna zoom in. Now hopefully on screen you could see this and I'm going to move this up so I, you can see what I'm going to do down here. I have Mortar 1. Now, Mortar 1 makes a selection. I have to see the outside of it so I can get close to it. Let me see the outside of it. Okay, that's exactly what I want. What I wanted to see was out here, I wanted, I wanted the mortar to stop right here. I had to have it stop. Now what I'm going to do is turn on the brick and I'm going to move this. I'm going to move this actually down and over to the right where I want the shadow. So let's see if my explanation makes sense to you. So I'm going to turn on the brick but I'm going to lower the opacity on the brick layer for now so you can barely see it. Now if I'm in the B key or the M key, B stands for brush, M stands for marquee. If I'm in the B key and I'm selected on the right thing, which is this layer here, which is this selection, okay? Actually, it doesn't matter what layer you're on. It matters that you're in the B key or the M key. I want to move this selection down one, two, three, four, five, and over one, two, three, four, five, maybe six. And I want to save it. So I'm going to go to Select and Save Selection as Mortar 2. Now, in Mortar 2, I'm going to hit Command S to save the file. I want you to understand kind of what I'm going to do. You can practice it many times. I'm going to make a selection of the first one. I'm then going to subtract the second one out of it. Now, to get to where I don't need to click on this, but I'm going to. I'm going to click on it. Now, do you see that I'm actually going to subtract this whole big white shape from the selection which will only leave where this little um, edge is between here and here. So I'm going to click back up to the RGB image. If I hold the option key, the, the command key, so hold your control key or command key, 
then hold Option or Alt and select the second mortar channel. Do you see how now I subtracted one shape from the other shape to get where they were overlapping? Okay, so I subtracted the one that I moved over to the right and down from the one that was in position. Now I'm going to save that selection as the moved shadow or moved, I'll just call it shadow. So now I have a new channel called shadow. But before I deselect it, I'm going to make the opacity go back up to 100%, but I'm going to turn off the wall and I'm going to turn off this layer, which is the black. And I'm going to click up to the shadow layer. Now, so you can see what's going to go in there is I'm going to put in a very dark red or dark value. That doesn't have to be red because the mortar is a gray color. Okay, so I'm going to hit Command H. I didn't get rid of the selection, I just hit it. Now, let's choose a black value towards the gray side. And I'm going to click up to the shadow layer and say Option Delete. Now I have these beautiful bricks to the lower right, which are end, going to end up looking like shadows when I put it on the right color mode and I gosh and blur it a little bit. So let me zoom in, Command S to save the file, turn on the brick. Now obviously that looks bad. It looks like it's been drawn on there. So if I take the shadow layer and I remove some intensity from it, and I go to Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur by a few pixels, like about 2.4 or 3 pixels, and hit the Return key, I have a gorgeous looking shadow. Now, it's given that wall a much more 3D appearance. Here's with the sh without the shadow and with the shadow. Now, I'll put a little bit more um, depth to that brick. Now, the cool part is, is that layer is above the graffiti. So look at how it made the graffiti look cool. Now look at how there is no shadow and now there is a shadow on the brick. And the neat part about it is, again, with the link button gone between the graffiti and its layer mask of the mortar, I'll Option or Alt click on that so you can see that. I'm going to click to the image and hit the V key and move this around and you can see how I can position that and or make this bigger however big I want to make it. I'm going to put it too low down here because when we bring it into After Effects and put it next to that girl it's going to be too low so I'm going to Command S to save the file. This is all you have to give me. So you don't have to enter After Effects. So when you get it to this point where you have all of these layers, I'll bring them on the screen just like this. So when you have all of these layers just send me your PSD file because I want to see how you made it. I want to see your shadow layer just like this. Shadow layer. Oh, you know what? I didn't turn the stain on. I apologize. Here's the stain. Now look at how the stain is above everything. So when I click, I can't believe I didn't turn on the stain. So and that's fine because your stain would have been off too. I just would have turned it on. So now I'm going to click to the same thing with no link icon. I'm going to hit the V key and I'm going to move this around and look at how it goes right with the staining. Now you're going to see just how incredible this is when we get it into After Effects. Now I'm going to hit Command S to save the file one more time and then I'm going to quit this movie and restart it directly and show you how I bring it into After Effects and do that part. Do you have to do it? No. Should you watch it? Yes.